Clara is a cute little girl with a giant robot guardian who bears no resemblance to any other white hair girl with her own giant guardians. Don't let her look fool you, she's a tanky bruiser who can do lots of damage without spending skill points in battle, which is really nice for the other team members. What makes her unique is her talent. This lets Svara counter anyone that attacks Clara and reduces the damage she takes. And Clara's ult gives her more damage reduction and lets Svara counter when any ally is attacked, not just the ones aimed at Clara. This counter also does more damage and splashes to nearby enemies, and you can see how many counters you have left with the white pips near her HP. You do not want to use her ult right after freezing an enemy, because the ult only lasts for 2 turns and you don't want it to go to waste. And her skill attacks all enemies and does extra damage to the ones that Sparrow have countered earlier in battle. So the game plan with Clara is to get hit. And how do we do that? Well, there are several methods to bait attacks. The easiest and one of the best ways is to use March 7th. Her shield gives the target more aggro for 3 turns. Not only do you get counters from Svarog, but March 7th also gets to sneak in some hits. Okay, the most obvious one is done. So what else? Did you know that different paths have different aggro values? Preservation units has the highest aggro followed by destruction. The squishy DPS from the hunt and your addition pass have the least aggro. Knowing this, the best spot to place Clara to get hit the most is next to a preservation character like Fire MC or March 7th. Then you want a healer in the third slot. If you are doing easy or farmable content, then put a support here instead to buff up, followed by your squishy DPS in the last slot. Just make sure to have a unit between Clara and the squishiest unit on your team. This order will let any splash attack that hit our tank to also cleave Clara and nobody else. And those extra cleaves and splashes still activates her counter. At the same time, if Clara gets hit from her own aggro skills, it will not affect the DPS in the 4 slot. Her best free to play light cone is the 5 star one you can buy from the simulated world. It has high stats and a decent passive. And if you did a good amount of simulated world week 1, you should be able to buy this weapon in week 2. Another good light cone is the 4 star secret vow. The passive adds a nice physical damage percent, however you might not activate the second part of the passive most of the time. And if you're feeling frisky and want to run a team without a healer, then nowhere to run is a nice pick for some sustain. And for the lucky or spenders out there, Clara's best light cone is her signature one. Everything in the passive benefits her, more attack, bonus physical damage, and even some healing. The best relic is the physical damage one and you can get a full 4 star set for free from the vendor in Boulder Town. And once you hit Trailblazer level 40, you can start farming the 5 star version. For ornaments, there isn't any that specialize for her. The attack, crits, or HP ones work just fine. Nothing too special here. Since I want to keep this guide short with only the important tips, I will end the video here. You now know how her counter works the team placement to bait the most hits, and her best free to play equipment. Trace priority will be ult, then skill, then talent, and definitely grab all the ascension passives along the way. Thanks for watching this video to the end, hope these tips help, let me know how you feel about Clara, and as always, have fun out there trailblazer.